Welcome back to my channel and today we have episode 32 of our Crochet Corner podcast. For any new viewers today, my name is Kai. I am the host of the Crochet Corner podcast here on YouTube and I want to thank you so much for spending a couple, um, a couple minutes. We all know these videos tend to get along, but spending some time with me today here on a Saturday. I believe it is September 12th um, and it is currently, let's see because I'm getting a very late start. 2 39 p.m. here in Vegas so I want to thank you so much for tuning in today and for all my returning viewers welcome back for another video I know last week I didn't podcast that's I had absolutely nothing to show um, I didn't work on anything because I was too busy like playing with my sewing machine if you could see it in the back that's my genome we'll talk about that later but yes but today I actually have uh, some finished optics and I also have um, my of course my works and progresses which I am very very excited to show you all so um let us first moisturize our lips definitely not a part but need some moisture okay you know so I made this um homemade lip balm and it is just so moisturizing that sometimes I do use it for my hands and then um, this is the extras that I had left over so I just keep them in this jar and let's take a sip of our drink of choice today we just have some good old water and then you can't really see it but I have a nice cold pitcher of water on the ready no this is not lemon water like I usually do it's just regular water so and this is from my Bubba mug that I got from Walmart. Best purchase, y'all. But anyway, let us dive right into it. So first, I want to talk about, um, it's not really admin. I don't know what I would call this. Um, but uh, in reference to the last podcast where I mentioned that I would like to do um, a, a uh, what do I want to call it? Just like a little fun um, thing for October where we can live stream with each other on Fridays once a week and you guys can pick any project of your choosing. It doesn't have to be knitting. It doesn't have to be crochet. Anything that you would like to work on and get completed by the end of October um, and you are eligible to win weekly prizes if you participate. So I do want to go ahead and get some more feedback from you all and see if that's something you would be interested in so that I can definitely start getting in some prizes and getting everything set up. So it would definitely be Fridays at um, I'm leaning between 4 to 5 p.m. because I do get off of work at 3.30 on Fridays and then it'll just be an hour it'll be under our social hour where we'll just do an hour live stream I'm going to sit with you and work on my projects you're gonna sit with me and work on your projects and it'll be fun and then um, each week you will be eligible for uh, winning some prizes so I just wanted to throw that out there in the beginning of the video because I usually talked about it at the end and my last two videos have been quite long so I understand if you know um, some of that didn't get watched, but if that is what you are interested in, you want to participate in that, please leave me a comment below because I don't generally use my Ravelry. It is linked below and I know that there has been some issues with people, excuse me. I apologize um, there have been some issues where Ravelry is not accessible to some um, but uh, I will definitely open up a Ravelry thread if you guys are interested in that and then you want to move forward um, starting in October I believe the last video said October 2nd um, but I will definitely check back and um, let you know uh, last thing that I want to know everything that I talk about as far as um, any yarn um, fabric and anything will always be linked in the show notes in the description box so if you had any questions about that feel free to look down there there's my email Facebook my uh, Ravelry and my Instagram if you ever need to get in contact with me um, I'm more active on Facebook and Instagram but feel free to send me an email as well if you had any other questions okay now that we got that out the way I want to just dive right into my finished objects this one is it's finished I just the part that I don't like doing the most I haven't done such as the other bag that I showed you guys last week. So this is another project bag I made. 
this is what the lining looks like I used um, this beautiful lining I love it um, and yes so I have yet to put the drawstring in there and that's because I kind of messed up on it where I, I like accidentally if you could see on the back I accidentally like pleated this when I was sewing it it's really not a big deal because it, it I mean it doesn't it it's wonky for sure if you like look at the back but once I put the drawstring in there, it, you're, it's not going to be noticeable. So that's the last thing that I have to do for this bag is I have to put the drawstring in. Um, this one I did without handles because you guys know last time I did the uh, the last bag without handles as well. Um, oops, lint. Because I didn't really care for the handles. Um, I definitely will. And that's just only because one, I hated doing them. So I'm like, eh. Um, but I'll definitely add handles and this one definitely, um, the more I'm doing these, the more I'm loving them. I love these three pad these three, uh, fabrics together. Um, this fabric and, <clears throat> excuse me, all three of these fabrics came from Walmart. They were like in little one yard pre-cut from, um, uh, was it Waverly? I don't remember. I'm not going to lie. I believe it was Waverly, but then it could have been just the generic brand I saw called Fabric Cut. But you can find these at Walmart. This one came, this uh, just regular tan. It came in a two yard for $10. So $5 a yard. But yeah, guys, I had so much fun making this. I will put the drawstring in there. It's just I'm just too lazy to do it. But this is definitely really cute. This part does annoy me, but I'm not going to unpick it and redo it. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, so, but yeah, once I put the drawstring in there, this part really, it won't really matter because it'll be cinched for the most part. And I did not put a pocket in this one like I did the other one. But I had so much fun making this, and I cannot wait to make some more. I already have some new fabric to show you guys where I want to make more project bags. And sticking with the sewing, I have another thing to show you guys sewing related. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. Okay, hopefully that helped because I'm sorry if it's uh, auto-focusing. But I learned how to make a boxy pouch. And that's that same fabric that's on the inside. I installed a zipper. I put like a little tab on it um this project was so much fun and it was way easier than i thought so this is a tutorial that i watched from melanie ham here on youtube i will link it below and it is a, honestly a really really great tutorial um the instructions were super easy to follow i literally have nothing bad to say about it i like how it's nice and poofy because of i bought some um, fusible fleece that you put on the inside to give your back structure. So I made this one, which is um, I'm giving to my cousin Sophie for Christmas. And then I made a larger size. And this one I didn't, uh, I didn't um, do too well <laughs> because it it's it's not as like it doesn't hold the shape as well as the other one. And then I forgot to add the uh, tag. So I had to sew it on afterwards. But this one I made for my sister. Nice and big pouch. So this one is 11 by 8 inches with a 14 inch zipper. And this one is 11 by 14 inches with a still a 14 inch zipper. Um, so yes, and this is what the lining on this one looks like. It's just a, uh, uh, like, um, I would say it's like lavender-ish gray. Uh, and then I paired it really nicely with this dark purple fabric that I got from Holly Lobby because they still have fabric on sale. And this one, I didn't cut the uh, fleece, fusible fleece, so it is peeking out at the bottom and on the sides. But it is nice and big. She has a lot of pencils, so I imagine she can, you know, use this for her pencils. I was thinking of putting a strap on it that's longer because it is kind of hard to like control because you know I didn't 
I didn't fuse the fleece well enough, but it's a nice big bag with a tie on. I did have to attach the tie on separately because I uh, forgot to do it <coughs> while I was making the bag. But I really, really like this. And then I will insert a picture of the last one I made, which was for my mom. Uh, I think she took it with her on her trip, so I don't have it. But it is the same size as this one, but I did double tone. I did half blue and then half of this really pretty um i think it was the same fabric as the lining for the purple one i made for my sister but is this and then it has a nice blue zipper which i was trying to find it so i could show you guys but i think she took it so that has been my sewing journey so far this um, I do have plans to make another one of these pouches and I love them so much I'm gonna make another bigger one but I'm gonna do it right this time and then I'm gonna make a bigger one for myself because I have enough fabric to do so I just have to go find some more zippers and it is so easy I learned the tutorial in one day and I have it completely memorized like all the steps yeah so I have all the steps memorized. I don't even need to reference her video anymore. That's how easy it was. And this is coming from a first time sewer. Thank you so much, Melanie. The tutorial was awesome. And I'll definitely link, in, link it down below for you guys. So you guys can make yourself a cute little boxy pouch. It was the easiest one that I found um, for a beginner. And I still, I have it memorized. Next, I want to bring this closer okay sorry guys so unprofessional but yeah i just wanted to bring that closer next is uh we're just gonna go right along into the works in progresses um so you guys know i have the shawl the cardigan and my socks i actually did work on one of the shawls i worked on uh the socks a lot and then i worked a little bit on the cardigan i first want to show the socks so i have my socks i moved them out of the other project bag into this one because it was a little bit bigger and then um it was easier for me to like work out of the bag because my yarn kept getting stuck on the teeth of the other bag I had it in the flappy bird bag so I just moved it into this one because it has a drawstring and when I'm working I could just close it up and this one was made by me this was the very first project bag I made and I am working with the uh, premier yarns uh, wool free sock again I don't know the colorway but this is what it looks like there you go focus I'm sorry guys that it's so dark in here. I, I'm just filming so late that it's not a lot of sunlight. So I do apologize about that. And so I am on the first sock. And I know in the last video I told you guys I was going to be doing the heel flapping gusset for this sock. Because I wanted to learn. And I kept my word. Oh I wish I could get one of my sock blockers. Hold on. Okay I just wanted to grab my sock blockers. And guys... I think I just found my new favorite heel. So this is what I have so far. I have knit. I'm doing this toe up, by the way. I have knit my toe, my foot, and I have finished my heel. So I did all of the gusset pickups along the side, and I did all the decreases. So I was at 50-something stitches when I did my um, pickup for my gusset, and then now I am decreased back to the regular 34, and I'm still doing um, everything magic loop. So the last time that you guys saw these socks, I was here. And so I this is how much I've knit since the last time. So I finished the heel and I am currently just working up the leg. So let me talk about this. So I'm pretty sure you guys can see. Let me just show it. There's very intense laddering going on. And that is completely my fault because when I was, I, I blame the tutorial and I blame me. <laughs> Can you guys, hopefully it focus, focus. Yeah, that's just, oh, it's so ugly. So basically what happened was I was following the tutorial and she was explaining everything okay, but 
um, when it got to the point where we were doing uh, after the heel flap when we started turning the heel I had a hard time like orienting my stitches in magic loop so I didn't really like when I was working across like you know decreasing for the gusset and still keeping in pattern with the front of my foot because you guys see I was doing the two by two rib I it I just messed it up and I ended up I don't even know how to explain to you guys like what happened but I wasn't really sure how to work magic loop during that whole situation so I kind of was just like messing it up and figuring it out and eventually I got to where like I I, I put uh, the front um, 34 stitches on this needle and then I just put the all the back stitches so it was a lot of stitches on here doing the decreases and I couldn't get good enough tension on the sides because that's where you're doing like so on this side it was a uh, slip slip knit and it just you see this part right here yeah just really bad and then on this side it was a uh, knit two together which the laddering is not as bad on this side. It's just I had so much problems with the other side. And I usually get laddering with the Magic Loop, but it's it's never been this bad. And I just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little upset about it because it's like I don't know how to fix it. But I also chalk it down to this was my first time ever doing a heel flapping gusset. Um, and then I also found a better tutorial. It's just that it's from top down and not toe up. But when I was watching the other, the different tutorial, it works out to be the exact same process. Obviously, you're just going at it a different direction. So, um, uh, from the second sock, it's going to look better. I'm definitely going to follow the second tutorial that I found because the second tutorial had, when you're doing your heel flap, this little slip stitch pattern on the back. Hopefully you guys can see it. Sorry, it's so dark. They had you doing it all the way up the foot. And it was supposed, because I wear really hard on this part and on this part. So I wish I had it did the slip stitch here when I was doing the heel flap. Um, and not just right here on whatever the whatever part this is but it's okay my next sock I am going to um, do the improvements and then if I can find more of this yarn I do plan on uh, just re-knitting this and probably just throwing this one away um, it didn't take me long to knit this one at all uh, I'm expecting that maybe by our next podcast I'll almost be done because look I'm this far up and so what I'm going to start doing now is I really like the slip stitches. So I'm going to do the slip stitches all the way up the back. And then I'm going to just continue my 2x2 two two rib up here. But yeah, guys, I am in love with the heel flap and gusset. The way it fits my foot is just so amazing. And I think that this might be my new favorite heel. I was very intimidated. But it's honestly, guys, it's really not hard. I don't know what I was intimidated the next thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to this sock is that I knit way too many stitches before I started, like way too many rounds before I started doing my heel flap. I knit 81 rounds for the foot and I probably only really needed to do 60 because the last time I wrote down where I was at, I was at 60 rounds, 61 rounds, and I probably should have started my heel flap in there instead of like extending it because it is way too big. Like these are large sock blockers and look at this and then on my foot it's way too big too but it still fits really nice um and i'm just gonna chalk it up to the game and i'm gonna try and find uh some more of this yarn so that i can knit some more so what happened was this got tangled this was a cake and this was the first ball i was working out of i had to cut it and then i just ended up attaching it to this bigger ball so this is what I'm currently working out of for this sock. And I am in love, 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 guys. I really do like the heel flap and the gusset, and it's not hard. It's not hard at all. I was just, like, intimidated for no apparent reason. So since you've seen, hold on, let me fix this back. I love the 2x2 two two rib in the front. So this is how much progress I made. Guys, that's awesome. That's just awesome. Um, so let me go ahead and move our stitch, our progress keeper up. Oh no, it 
pulled on that stitch. Hold on, let me pull that back. Um, and I'm going to move our my progress keeper up into this row. Ooh. It's just the stitch, and then there you go. So by the next time you see these socks, hopefully, sorry, come on, focus. Next time you see them, hopefully, maybe I'll be on the ribbing. I don't know. I don't want to jinx myself. But yes, I keep that in this bag because it is awesome. And then it just feels nice to have my projects, you know, in something that I made. So that's another thing. I have to find... Um, a different use for that other project bag and then let's just tie this up a little bit and stuff it in here so yes that was that and that was a nice progress I made on that I'm very happy with that the next I want to show you is the shawl so you know I put both shawls in there I only worked on one of them Honestly, it's not enough progress to show. I'm not even going to pull it out and do anything with it. I only worked on like a couple rows. Once I have significant progress, I'll show you. But this I do have progress on because I don't think I showed you guys it since the last time I had to rip it out um, and repin it. So I keep the crochet hook in this bag. This came from Miss Kim. Um, she sent me these project bags. So I keep my sweater in and the two shawls in these big bags. But yes, and then I keep all the yarn and the crochet hook and the measuring tape all in there. So this one, I uh, think I mentioned last time, where on the side that I had already sewn up, I ended up having to rip it out and um, and repin it so that I could re-sew it. Just get it orientated here. There we go. I have it like completely upside down. As the this front panel, my original qualm with it was that it wasn't lining up, and that was because it was on me. <laughs> yeah. So what happened was I forgot that for so I was doing a little pattern. I was trying to be cute. So I was doing ten rows of the bonbon and six rows of the white. I forgot so instead of alternating 10 and 6 down the side I was doing 10 white 10 bonbon so that's why it didn't line up but it was still too short I stand by that so I ended up elongating it doing um, this bottom row I had only did four rows of so this white I ended up just adding the six additional rows and that fixed the issue where it was too short and then I just used my uh, sewing clip <laughs> To hold it together for me until I'm ready to sew it um, but that was that so on this side I am on um, I believe I'm getting ready to start the decreases I have um, a pin over here that shows me when I mean increases when I started increasing and let's see oh I was supposed to Oops. Okay, so I was already supposed to be increasing. So that means on this one I have to rip it out. But yeah, I just haven't, you know, wanted to work on it. That's all. Nothing now. It's, you know, but it should be finished hopefully by next podcast. I just realized I need to rip this out and attach the white bag so I can start the uh, increases. Oops. But yeah, guys, I love my Bon Bon cardigan. It's going to come out really nice. And I mentioned last episode that it was like really short on the sides. And I plan on fixing that, but I'm just going to do a really long border. I'm going to do a button band, and I'm going to put a hood on it. So yeah, I think soon after I get this done, I'm not going to sew it together yet. I'm going to just work on the sleeves so that I can have all of the pieces together and then just sew everything together so that means i might go ahead and attach the hood before i start doing the border let me think hmm i don't know i'll figure it out 
I'll figure it out when I get there. And this is in Red Heart Bonbon and then just some mainstays white yarn. I also ooh, ASMR. I also have some white yarn from Red Heart, but I haven't I haven't touched that yet because I haven't ran out. And uh, yes, so I still am going back and forth between whether I want to line it or not. Um, I don't know because one, I don't think I want to because that'll take a very long time. And two, um, I do kind of want to because I want to be able to wear it and it's getting colder. So, I keep toggling back and forth between whether I really want to line it or not. Um, but yeah, that was all for my works in progresses. I'm doing very, very good about working on the current progress, progresses, projects that I have and not starting any new ones. But today I actually will be starting some new projects because if you guys don't know, um, I have to make 12 stockings. <sighs> I have to make 12 stockings for kids. So, I actually want to start doing that today because it's going to take me a while. I have the yarn for it. Um, so, with that being said, I actually am going to start a couple more projects. But for the most part, I have just been sticking to the main ones. I haven't put any more socks on the needles. I think I might try to finish my pink pair before I invest in doing more socks. I have been doing my research on top down. I'm still really not interested in it, but I want to try it. I really do. I just think that, ugh, I just have to dive into it. It's just like with the heel flap and the gusset. Once I dive into it, I have a more of an open mind, but it's, it's just like the leading up to it. I'm just kind of like, oh Lord, I don't want to do that. But yeah, I've been doing my research. I definitely am in love with the heel flap and gusset. It just fits so nice on my foot. Um, and I'm just going to have like two different size socks because the second sock, I definitely know what to do better, um, to make it fit better. And I hope I can find that yarn because I don't mind just re-knitting that one sock. I say that now, but we'll see. <laughs> um, next thing I want to show you is just some things I got from Hambelabe. Um, so this is what I was talking about that gave structure to my bags. I ended up getting two yards of this because I kept only getting one yard and then I was like running out. This is called fusible fleece and it's what you want to use when you're making those bags. The pro You could use it on your project bags or you could use it on, you know, that um, the little makeup bags that I showed you guys. So I have a lot of this. Very, very happy. I'm going to go stock, I'm going to be stocking up on that stuff because the, I don't want to just be limited to project bags. I want to make purses. I want to make everything, double bags. I want to sew it all. And then I also went back because they had that sale on there. Ooh, yes, tomorrow. Sorry for the crinkling. They had the sale on their fabric. So, you know, y'all know I had to go get me some. So, uh, the first I actually wanted, the first two I want to show off was their clearance um was their clearance stuff and this is vinyl and with this vinyl oh let me grab the I'm going to make another of the makeup bags, the 14, 11 by 14 one, so the bigger one. And I bought this a heavy duty zipper for it. It's very pretty. It's got like rainbow in the middle for the zipper. So yeah. I bought that so that I can make a nice little makeup bag. And with vinyl, because it's already kind of like really structural, you don't have to line it. So I get to just go ahead and make the bag. I mean, line it. You don't have to interface it with the fleece. You just leave it as is and you add your lining. And I'm going to put my sewing machine to the test because my sewing machine sewed through like four or five layers of fabric and a zipper so I think that it'll be perfectly fine with this and I also picked up this uh, is called PVC I liked it because it looked like faux leather you can see it's brown and I I don't know what I want to make with this um, but I am very excited to try and use this as well um, with my sewing machine the next is uh, just the pretty fabric. So I got this um, ooh, 
This is the fabric I made my sister's bag out of, which I already showed you guys. Very beautiful. It's like a, a wine purple uh, burgundy color. Um, This is just repeat fabric because I already purchased this one, but I forgot and I got it again. <laughs> so I just have like two yards of this one. And the last one was this really nice Patty Eiffel Tower fabric that I really liked. Because the flowers in Eiffel Tower have glitter on them. You can't really see so yeah that's the fabric I picked up and the last thing that I want to show that I got um which is from Walmart not Hobby Lobby but I keep it all in the same bag yeah I need some better storage for my stuff but let me put this down um I got some vinyl a vinyl elastic because I want to use some of my scrap fabrics um to make some masks I'm gonna learn how to make some masks customize them for myself so I got three of those they were a dollar at Walmart so I thought it was a good steal so yes guys that is it for everything let's see how many minutes we are into this video 36 so yes guys that's everything for finished objects works in progresses and now I just want to talk to you guys about um things i'm going to be working on in the future like i said i'm going to be making another one of those makeup bags out of the vinyl i'm also going to start working on those stockings so that i can have them mailed out by christmas i only have to have one two three of them mailed out to illinois to my cousins the rest of them are staying here thank god but i need to get them done because my cousin sophie she asked me if i could give her that um the, the pink um she wants she wants this so i'm going to send this to her and also one the pink project bag i made not the gray one but the other one um that i made and then her stocking um, which i bought some nice purple and pink variegated yarn with some white stellina so that it can have sparkle um and then after that uh after i finish that i really think what i'm gonna do is um spend I think maybe this week I might dedicate uh, my time to get to the shawls because I really want to have the, especially the mandala shawl. I really, really want to have that one done by Christmas so I can give it to my mom. I think she would really like that and it would be really nice and cozy for her to have. Um, so that's all I have planned. I'm trying to take everything. So I've been really good about working on my projects. I don't necessarily have the best track record when it comes to that. So I'm actually, you know staying on top of everything and making sure that I get you know these projects busted out because I shouldn't have started all all of them at one time but yes I am very excited so excited so excited for um, this upcoming December um, my brother my older brother is having twins so I get to be an auntie times two and I get to make all the baby stuff I have to find the perfect yarn to make two baby blankets he also wants me to knit them some red socks so I have to do that and I just have a lot and so I need to bust out these projects that I'm working on now so that I can at least by October November -ish, I could be working on the Christmas stuff even though you're supposed to be do that sooner I I just don't so mm. somebody ice cold water but yeah, guys, that is actually all I have um, to share with you today. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week for another podcast. I do hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And don't forget to um, give me a like comment any questions you might have for me um, and if you are going to participate in our October I don't even know what to call it our October uh, social hour along where we just work on projects and you win prizes please let me know and then also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell I believe is at the bottom right the little bell that will let you know whenever I upload a video um, and with that being said thank you so much for coming and sitting here with me on this Saturday I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.